You are listening to the Call to Action podcast, where we aim to inspire, educate, and inform entrepreneurs and self-starters on tech and tips related to navigating this ever-changing world. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to episode 43 of the Call to Action podcast. I am your host, Shantae, and today we are having a fireside chat with three guests today. I have a combination of authors and entrepreneurs on the show, and it's going to be a good one. My guests for today's show are Rashmi P. Menon, Lally A. Love, and Amarina Carlton. Before I bring our guests onto the show, I have an inspirational quote that I'd like to share. And here is the inspirational quote for episode 43 of the Call to Action podcast. Take time for self-care. Create and revisit memories of love, harmony, and joy within self. There is great joy when living a life committed to your personal well-being. And that is by yours truly. If you missed episode 42 of the Call to Action podcast, as always, it is a must listen. My guest for that episode was J.D. Edwards. J.D. is a fantasy author and an author of historical fiction. He has published four books in the Fairy Chronicle series and has a new book in the historical fiction genre, which he shares some interesting and kind of personal historical information concerning his family, all related to his upcoming book. You can hear all about that in that episode. But in the meantime, take a listen to this clip from episode 42 of the Call to Action podcast. Um, Called Indomitable, which is written and going through the editing beta reading process right now. And it's based on a character named Eliza Harris. And uh, basically, it's the true true events of her life written into a historical fiction uh, novel. Uh, her name may be familiar to people who read Uncle Tom's Cabin because her life was made a fiction in that book. Uh, but the people who rescued her and uh, her conductors on the Underground Railroad uh, were my family. So her life and her escape into Canada directly affects my own family. So I decided to write about her life in a historical fiction, uh, historical fiction concept. Uh, after that, you know, after that, I'm going to go back to fairy. <laughs> I have a prequel, have a prequel series set up for the, the origins of fairy. And what I'll do is I'll take one book and write it based on this. Again, you can hear the full episode on CTA marketing.biz. When you're there, Click on podcast on the main menu to access that episode as well as past episodes. As mentioned in the intro, I have three guests on my show today. We have Rashmi P. Menon, who is a multi-genre author and editor. We have Lally A. Love, an award-winning author and Amazon bestseller of dark fantasy, science fiction, paranormal thriller, and metaphysical poetry. We also have Amarina Carlton, who is a Southern fiction writer and is currently editing her first novel. So ladies, welcome to the Call to Action podcast. How are you all doing today? Very well, Great. thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Hello, awesome. hello. Thank you so much for having us. What a pleasure. Hey, Lolly. Glad to have you here, too. I'm excited, ladies. We're, we're going to have a good show tonight. It's the three of, oh, it's the four of us. It's like a party night, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we bring it. <laughs> yes, yes. We are holding it down. Okay, ladies. So I do an icebreaker on my show. Whenever I have guests on the show, I do an icebreaker. I think they're fun. And it's just a really good way for people to get to know you. So, Rashmi, we're going to start with your icebreaker first. So, for you, you have to share with us if you've ever been told that you look like a celebrity, and if so, which one? 
Oh, that's a good question. And I think I have the perfect story to share for that. Um, this was a few years back when I was traveling with my son. Um, I think I was in Pennsylvania at the time. And um, we were going to the Liberty Bell. Uh, and this young girl, she uh, runs up to me and she's like, uh, hey, do you know Macy Williams? And I go, uh, Macy Williams? Uh, and she goes, uh, you don't know Macy Williams? And I'm like, should I be knowing her? Uh, do you know Game of Thrones? And I go, <laughs> Game of Thrones? Uh, is that something I should be knowing? <laughs> and she gives me this look like, you don't know Macy Williams and you don't know Game of Thrones? How can you not know Game of Thrones? And I felt so like, oh my God, that looks like something I should be knowing about. I mean, that sounds like something I should be knowing about. <laughs> and I asked her, what is that? And she just looks at me and she's like, I just wanted to tell you that you look like Macy Williams, but now that you don't know Game of Thrones, I don't think you look like Macy Williams. And she just walked out. (laughs) (laughs) The pressure, the pop culture pressure, right? (laughs) And I just stood there and my son goes, he's like looking at me and I just stood there and I was like, I need to find out who Macy Williams is, <laughs> what Game of Thrones is. So I go back uh, and when I get back, I go uh, talk to my colleague and I ask her, hey, um, do you know what Game of Thrones is um, and who Macy Williams is? And she gives me this look like, you don't know Game of Thrones? Like, you haven't read the book? You haven't seen the show? And I was like, oh my God, I should be knowing that, right? She's like, <laughs> you should be knowing that it's a popular fantasy book and a pop- very, very popular show. And I'm not kidding when I say that the very same night I came home and I ordered a Game of Thrones book series. <laughs> I, started I started watching this show uh, <laughs> just because I wanted to know who Macy Williams was. Um, at that time, I was so flabbergasted by you know that experience that uh, I actually was not sure whether that was a compliment or an insult. <laughs> oh, it's definitely a compliment because Arya is one of my favorite characters of the show. So yeah, yeah. Me After too. I watched uh, the show and I mean read the book and mainly watched the show, I uh, she she. Became became one of my favorite characters too so uh, definitely yeah that's great you know i have a confession and mine is that i've never ever seen an episode of game of thrones and it comes up it's come up on my show before and i'm like kind of quiet i'm like hmm, i've never seen that so i guess now it's coming up again so i may have to at least take a look at one episode <laughs> so i can know everyone's talking about oh. That's get ready to get there. hooked. You will get hooked even from the first episode because it's quite a ride. Oh, really? It's one of those oh, addictive yeah. shows you got to binge watch? Yeah, you might 100%. have to binge watch. That's what happened to me. I thought, let me check out the, the pilot episode. I started watching the pilot episode. And by the time, you know, the 45 minutes uh, or so passed, I was like, okay, I'm going to sit whole night and watch this. Yeah. Oh, my Honestly, goodness. I watched it twice, and the second time around, there were things that I totally missed because there are so many plots and point of views that Mm -hmm. um, it's incredible. The writing, it's it's one of the top ones, I I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Totally worth your time. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, okay. I may have to at least check out an episode. Well, I'll have to see. I'll have to see. Well, but thanks for sharing that, Rashmi. Appreciate that. Now, Lowly, since we're talking about binge watching TV shows, yeah. right? <laughs> so what else? So what she, else are we going to do during the pandemic, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so share with us, Lowly, what was the last TV show that you binge watched? Um, the last one was The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. And um, oh my gosh, that's another incredible show. I'm a huge fan of Margaret Atwood. Uh, I I was going to take a master class last year, which I may still do perhaps sometime this winter. But the writing and the intensity of the acting was incredible. It was... Um, it was unexpected. It was horrifying, but it was um, also uh, a scathing satire. And there is, you know, if you're going to watch it, be warned. There's a lot of violence in there, but the the subject matter is very close to reality, which is a little mm-hmm. bit uh, unnerving. But uh, I think it's something everyone should watch, to be honest with you. 
Wow. Okay. Now that was a book and also a TV series, right? Mm -hmm. And a TV series, yes. Okay. Okay. So ladies, it sounds like you all have seen it. So I don't dedicate a lot of time to entertainment. So my time is precious. Let me know if I do this, should I start with a book or with the television show? I would recommend the book first, always. <laughs> okay. Um, but they are very, di like, they're two distinct pieces of literature. I mean, the show is based on the book, but it's very different. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But you can't okay. go wrong with starting the, with the books because yeah. the books right. are, it's the author's voice and she's incredible. So yes. um, definitely start with the book and then see, see if you want to watch the show, you know? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Good advice. See, I trust you guys because you're authors. So I knew I'd ask you. I get your get your true opinion from that. <laughs> yeah, I re really think that every woman should either read this book or watch the show. Okay. All right, guys. All right. See, now that's two. I got to at least check out Game of Thrones, at least one episode. And then now <laughs> The Handmaid's Tale. So, okay, I'll look into that one too. All right. My list is growing over here, but that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> All right. So, Amarina, you're next. And for you... Share with the audience that uh, the place where you would live, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Um, it would be in England, actually. Um, I have, um, I, no surprise, I've read a lot since I was, since I was very small and um, a lot of like Jane Austen and different things like that since I was very young. And I've just always loved England. And I had the opportunity to go when I was 19. And I promised myself that when I was 19, that I would live there when I was older. I haven't made it yet, but uh, I'm still crossing my fingers and working my way in that direction, hopefully one. You could get there, Amarina. Just, you know, keep focusing on it. I'm sure you, I'm sure you could get back over there. You did it once, you could do it again. Yeah, um, it was a college. I went for a semester in college and it was an amazing experience. Like I really recommend if people have the opportunity to study abroad that they do it. Um, I had to work really hard. I had to save money. I had to get a scholarship um, and I actually used some student loans that I regret now. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it's a, it was an opportunity that I don't regret. So, you know, um, but yeah, like, so if, if people have the opportunity, I definitely recommend that. That's great. That's great. Thank you for sharing. I think every person, if, if you are from one country or another, to be able to go and live and visit or at least visit another country, I think it's a beautiful thing. It opens your eyes to the world. Um, right. Just a little bit about myself. I had an opportunity to live in, in Okinawa and I lived there and it was beautiful. And it was just wonderful because you get to meet so many different types of people yeah. and it just really rounds you out as a person. I think everyone, everyone should be taken out of their comfort zone and sent somewhere else to go live with other people. I think it's beautiful. Yes. It just creates a whole Absolutely. new being. Absolutely. And I feel like yes. it's something that's not emphasized very much in um, our country, especially that we we're very United States focused and we don't, uh, you know, get enough of that worldview, I think sometimes. So, yeah. 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 I think it's, I think it's definitely, <laughs> definitely a good thing that people should be doing at a young age as well. At a young yeah. age. <laughs> Ladies, your icebreakers were fun and amazing and very interesting and informative. Now I have a task list of a couple of shows to go check out, or at least a couple of books to go to go and read or listen to. Um, so now I know that you all are writers and entrepreneurs, and I want to get more into that. So I want to start with Lally. And mm -hmm. Lally, I know that you are an award-winning author on Amazon. Um, you have uh, what you're a bestseller of dark fantasy, science fiction, paranormal thriller, and also metaphysical poetry. So I'd like to know about what inspires you, Lally. When did you know that you wanted to write? That's a fabulous question. Thank you. Um, there are several things that inspire my writing, but 
it all started, I guess, uh, about 2016. Um, I work as a business transformation architect for the government of Canada uh, as my daytime job. And um, back in 20, uh, around 2011, I had the pleasure of working with some of our Indigenous people on the Indian residential school legacy that our country, um, you know, has has had to, to face. Uh, that's a whole different topic. But um, con- conversing with each of these survivors of this atrocity, um, I, I had this pleasure working with many brave men and women warriors that have shared their stories with me of their childhood trauma. And I was astounded to discover how many innocent children and people suffer due to intergenerational cycles of alcoholism and violence. And at the same time, I was embarking on my own sort of awakening journey. And I was in really getting inspired to write an emotional, emotionally evoking thriller where I could raise awareness on these re- relevant issues through the fictional characters. And I've um, gone into spirituality in terms of, you know, trying to find my purpose, you know, that old, you know, question, what is our the, my purpose in this world? Like, mm-hmm. what is my mission, my purpose? And I've, um, I've learned different healing modalities in terms of self-love and self-realization and, you know, um, positive thinking and aligning with heart center emotions. And so I use some of these insights in my writing, in my fictional writing, as well as my poetry. And that's, that's the metaphysics part is what is reality and everything, you know, we believe we basically see. So everyone is living their lives through their own perception, their lens. So um, I I was really humbled to be able to tell uh, the heart-wrenching story of my debut novel, Heart of a Warrior Angel, which was the first in the Ascending Angel uh, series that reflects some of the uh, experiences of the survivors. And... Um, it gives them a voice for my characters. And it always also, I had the, the ability to heal my own childhood wounding and some, some of, you know, the experiences that I went through. Um, and so for me, through all of my uh, novels, so I'm getting ready to launch my fifth book. Uh, it's The Decoding of Joe Blade of Truth on July 7th. And congratulations. Mission- awesome. Oh, thank you so much. I'm very excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's um, really good. And, and my mission for, for all my books is to empower, enlighten, and entertain. And if, if it's, you know, makes a difference for one person, then I fulfill my mission. And for me, uh, you know, I try to shine a light on very sensitive topics like childhood abuse. Uh, you know, depression, mental health, um, perhaps to serve as a catalyst for changing conversations around, you know, the stigma of shame that, that mm-hmm. that's around these things. So um, I'm, I'm very excited for uh, my book to launch in, in July. And um, yeah, I, I have a third one coming out in the Decoding of Joe series. And I'm hoping that uh, <laughs> I haven't started writing it yet. I've just did the outline, <laughs> but I'm hoping to have the final book in the Ascending Angel Academy series by next year. Wow, that is good. So your your books are inspired to, to help to heal, to bring attention to yeah. topics and to help bring forth like a healing and a self-love type of um, thing for lack of a better word, but that's, that's what I'm getting from what you're saying, right? hundred percent. Those are the major themes. It's about overcoming trauma. It's about transformation. And, uh, it, there's, they're, they're also like uh, thrillers and science fiction fantasies, right? So <laughs> there's, there's that undertone of fighting good and evil. 
um, throughout the characters. And my characters in the Decoding of Joe series are all very diverse and um, they they all have certain childhood traumas they're trying to heal within themselves. And so it's beautiful the way they come in because it, it talks about the relationships between the friends and how they connect. And um, it really is a story about loving themselves and loving each other and you know healing through the act of forgiveness. So those are the themes. Lolly, thank you for sharing what inspires you. It's just really, you can really feel the energy just hearing you talk about it. Um, so that's, it's really beautiful. When you talk about people healing and mental health and wellness, that I think should be taught in schools. It, it's something that people learn about later in life. But I think it's something that really should be, of course, definitely in the home, but mm -hmm. it should just be a part of everyday life. Like, just like they teach math and reading and everything else and science, it should really be about, you know, self-care. That should all be included, my opinion. But I'd have a different type of school. Oh, yeah. It would be a super nurturing environment just because people need it. You know, hugs everywhere. I mean, seriously, it would be <laughs> just a really exactly. different type of school system. But that's a different story. <laughs> um, <laughs> what did you say? I said, I totally believe in hugs and unicorns. Oh, you know, too. I do too. <laughs> if you see my posts, I always have a unicorn and a heart. <laughs> I always have them on there. <laughs> I'm riding unicorns, everything. <laughs> oh, how cute. How cute. So Rashmi, now it's your turn for you to share what inspires you. Now I know we both like unicorns. Um, <laughs> so what inspires I you? <laughs> I have uh -huh. a love for all mythical creatures, I think, um, because I love unicorns. I love phoenix and I love oh, yeah. dragons. I, uh, uh, dragons are there in a lot of my writing because um, I just have the special love for them. <laughs> oh, they're um, beautiful. All types. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful creatures. Yes. Um, with regards to inspiration. Inspiration. Um, I try to find my inspiration from, you know, around me. But if I have to, you know, pick something, um, I would have to say my son. Uh, and I say my son because um, I am a single mother. Uh, and there was a time in my life uh, when, uh, you know, things were not uh, really great for me. Um, and you can, you know, I, I would almost say that I was um, at rock bottom. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's a thing about hitting rock bottom. Um, once you hit rock bottom, there's only one place you can go and that's up. Um, but you, to be able to go up, you need to, you know, you need that uh, energy source to pull you up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for me, that is my son. Um I see him and I see the energy and I see his smiles and I see his, the look in his eyes when he looks at me, like he looks at me with like, oh, you're the kind of person I want to be when I grow up. Uh, and that's what he tells me to. That gives me so much energy and so much inspiration that just to show him that you can do it, you know, you can do whatever you want and be happy um, and, you know, even if things go wrong in your life, like you can actually do something else and there's always uh, something that will uh, work out right. I wanted to actually show him that path and that's how my inspiration actually started. I started writing more. I started uh, planning. I started, uh, you know, thinking of what I want to do uh, with regards to my writing. And also in terms of, uh, you know, uh, as an entrepreneur, um, I, I was afraid uh, initially, like, should I be doing this? Should I start off? What if it fails? What if it does not do well? But then I thought if I you know, if I uh, become afraid of all the what ifs, um, then that's what I'm showing my son. But if I actually jump in and make a plan and start working for it and show him that, you know, put in the hard work, then there's something good that's going to come out. Uh, and that's that's just how I planned um, and started working together um, uh, with uh, Amarina and a few other uh, amazing ladies, um, you know, in in uh, the Discord server writing group that we have. Um, there are other reasons, of course, uh, why we wanted to do uh, an independent publishing uh, house, but this was my main inspiration as well. 
And when I was, uh, you know, um, when I launched uh, Ravens and Roses Publishing um, and I was looking for a debut book, um, I wanted um, a book and an author who would actually represent uh, the message that my independent publishing house would give. And the message that we want to share is that we believe in diversity. We believe in inclusion. We mm-hmm. believe in representation. It matters. And people have a right to feel included. People have a right to feel that, uh, you know, in the publishing industry or even in the book industry, in the books that they read, that they can see themselves. Um, as a person of color, I love reading books where I can identify with a character that looks like me, talks like me. Right, um, right. Um, so that was, uh, you know, one of, uh, that is like, you know, part of our uh, organization's culture. Um, and also, uh, you know, there are uh, a lot of uh, underrepresented and marginalized uh, writers and people out there in marginalized communities who are amazing writers, but, um, you know, don't really have the opportunity. Um, so we want to actually uplift and support them. Um so to be able to spread that message, I said, I want a strong uh, writer uh, who shares this message. I want I want to launch, I want my debut, uh, you know, a book for Ravens and Roses to be from a strong voice. And uh, I know Lali uh, through t- Twitter for uh, the last three years. We talk a lot mm-hmm. and we were just talking one day and Lali uh, was like, hey, I'm getting ready to publish um uh, I mean, I'm ready with Blade of Truth, uh, the Essendon uh, Academy series. Uh, why don't you give it a look? And I said, oh, my God, Lali, I, I, I've read her book because I edited it for her. Um, <laughs> I said, this is perfect. I mean, I would love to launch, uh, you know, uh, Ravens and Roses with your book. And we were like, oh, yes, you know, our messages are the same. We should work together. And it was like, <laughs> um, you know, a bulb went off, went on in both our brains. And we were like, yes, that's what we should do. <laughs> yeah. You know what? (laughs) This is, you know what? That's beautiful. This is so funny. I have heard more stories of people coming together on social media, mainly Twitter, and creating these beautiful projects. And this is another one. I just love hearing these. This is so awesome. And it just shows how, and you guys are in different locations, right? We are. Uh, Lali is uh, uh, based in Canada, I'm based in the East Coast in uh, Virginia. Yeah, and wow. I'm, I'm in New Orleans. So. Oh, oh wow! I'm you know what? That, and I'm in Ohio. But that is oh, wonderful. We're all in the same time zone. That's great. Actually, <laughs> I'm East Coast. You guys yeah. are Central, right? I'm or is everyone East Coast? I'm the only one that's Central. I think. Okay. All right. I'm East Coast as well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's I love hearing those stories. It's just so wonderful how people are coming together, breaking barriers and doing these projects and coming together and collaborating. And it's just wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. I just love to hear those stories. All right. I did not mean to interrupt Rashmi. Go ahead. Go ahead. (laughs) I love sharing stories. And, you know, everywhere we talk, uh, Lali and I, we talk about the story and everyone is amused and we, we, we love talking about it because everyone, uh, you know, enjoys the story. <laughs> we love talking about it. Yes, exactly. Oh. We're quirky and charming, right, trust me? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, that is great. My uh, story of how, uh, you know, Amarina and I started working together is also pretty similar because um, I run a writing group in um, uh, uh, on the Discord app. Um, it's called Confessions of a Writerholic. And the writing group was initially created, uh, you know, to get uh, together a lot aspiring writers, aspiring authors um, to just, you know, come in and join together and discuss um, ideas and, uh, you know, share ideas um, and talk about the writing process and be supportive for each other, uh, you know, to find editors and beta readers and critique partners. Um, so that was the idea, the initial idea of uh, Confessions of uh, a Writerholic. And, um, you know, um, about a year or so back, um, 
uh, Amy uh, joined the group and uh, we just started talking, you know, within that group. Um, so Confessions of a Writerholic now grew uh, uh, into like, you know, a l- little more of a larger group where we have established authors and everyone joining us, which has been great. Um, so Amarina and I, we, we started talking and we just started working together. And when I was thinking of, uh, you know, Ravens and Roses uh, uh, publishing, I wanted this uh, all women team. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm big about uh, women empowerment and I wanted this all women team and I, I wanted to, I wanted like-minded individuals uh, who would work with us. Um, so a couple of my writing partners and my writing friends, um, you know, they, they approached me and we said, okay, let's talk about it. And Amy uh, showed interest and I was like, oh, I know Amy is going to be great too. <laughs> <laughs> We just created a group uh, chat and we said, okay, let's talk about this. And uh, Amy jumped in and she was like, oh, I'm definitely in. And I said, okay, then here's what we can do. And and we just started working together. You know, it just happened. <laughs> wow. That, that is really cool. Just the collaboration. And, and I, I've said this before on my show, but like the beauty of the internet and the age that we are in is the fact that things like this can happen. And just think of the people that you're going to be helping with your publishing company. And also I'm sure with your group that you have on discord and how people are able to come together and get support, just like in the writing community on Twitter, which I find to be very supportive. Um, And I think it's very important that people have groups like that, that they can connect with. And I'm learning that it doesn't matter if you've met the person in person or not. I mean, a lot of times, I haven't met a lot of people that I have that I've have as guests on the show or friends on Twitter that I do consider friends um, because we text, you know, DM or just a message or just to see how I'm doing or I may see how they're doing. And I just think it's a beautiful thing with the time that we're in. So, ladies, just thank you for doing what you're doing. I, I really do. I think it's great. I think it's awesome. Thank you, Shanti. That's incredible. And I, if, incredible. May, may I just say, I'm so grateful to have connected with you, beautiful souls, and mm-hmm. with so many amazing friends on the writing community on Twitter since mm-hmm. uh, joining in 2019. It's craziness mm-hmm. how we have connected not only within our in North America, but all around the world, like in the UK, in mm-hmm. um Paris, France, and London, uh, Ireland, India, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter where we are, like once our hearts, you know, all connect, it's, uh, it's incredible. Um, It's, it's beautiful. And so I'm very grateful. And can I just say, I've met one friend when I went to uh, Paris uh, two years ago from the running community and it was the most exciting experience I've ever had. <laughs> so. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. That I is. had to meet in person. Mm-hmm. Yes. I have several, oh, sorry. I have several friends from the UK. Maybe if I ever make it there, maybe I'll be able to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will, Emerina. Yes, I'm sure you will. One day it's going to happen. Sure. That's right. You keep talking about it. You're going to bring it to yourself. You'll be there. Yeah. You'll definitely be there. <laughs> yeah. we, well, we now. About it until you get there, Marina. That's right. <laughs> that's yeah. right. So, Marina, now you're next. So I want to hear from you. Just share with us what inspires you. Um, well, similarly to uh, Rashmi, my daughter inspires me a lot. Um, she is three. Um, she... Uh, and kind of one of the things like, cause I mean, I've been writing my entire life. My mom um, used to read to me, like I come from very blue collar um, roots where I was the first person in my family to go to college. And um, so <laughs> writing didn't, was not on the, the table for me, you know, like that you, when you're the first person to go to college, you, you do something that uh, makes good money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, once you hear you but, say you're going to be a doctor or something, like you're gonna, yeah, you're going to do yeah. be a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My uncle is still disappointed that I am not a a lawyer. <laughs> oh, um, but um, <laughs> I ended up I ended up studying journalism because writing has just always been my passion. Like as soon as my mom read to me so much because she was like that it's going to make you smart, <laughs> which mm-hmm. um, m- maybe she, I mean that she might be right. That might, I I definitely attribute that to me being a writer because I, uh, 
love stories. I've always loved stories. Um, and she's definitely one of my inspirations, but she passed away um, three years ago, right after I had my daughter. Um, oh. And uh, I think kind of the combination of them and like, I spent so many years doing jobs that I didn't like. Um, as many of us have, a lot of people spend so much time um, working because they have to. And uh, mm -hmm. when we had my daughter, I had just left a job and I was going to try to start um, a business because I, I also have my MBA and a focus in entrepreneurship. And I was going to try to start um, a game, a game shop because um, mm -hmm. we all also really like game games in our family. And uh, incidentally, um, I got pregnant like a month after I left my job. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So wasn't the best time to start a business. Um, also wasn't the best time to try to find a different job. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and so we ended up like I ended up uh, doing Uber driving and some random things for a little while. But um, yeah, and then my husband was like, well, you know what? I think we can figure this out. I think you can stay home and be a writer like you've always wanted to do. Like you've been writing in notebooks since you were a child at school and, you know, writing, <laughs> writing notebooks. You know, we have hundreds of notebooks in our house with your writing in it. And I think we can figure this out and you can stay home with her and figure out writing, which is a challenge. I will say uh, writing, <laughs> doing anything with a three-year-old, but uh, we mm -hmm. figured it out. Um, yeah. and one of, one of my things is that, you know, we only have so much time on this earth and to spend all of it doing things you hate is just so disheartening. And, you know, so many people suffer from depression and I know that it's not realistic for everyone, but, you know, just pursuing your happiness is what I mean. Like even even if you can't do it as your main job, like just not being afraid to go after your happiness. And, um, mm -hmm. oh, that's and so we, important. Oh yeah. 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 That's and, what um, we're meant to do, to be honest with you. That's the realization is to follow your passion. Exactly. Right? Molly, yeah. that is so true. And I'm so big on that. That is so true. Yeah. You have to take time for yourself. Yeah. If you're not together, you know, how are you going to help other people? You know? So but definitely self comes first. Right. And, um, and that's one of the things I'm trying to model for her. So that's why, how Beautiful. she, how she's my inspiration. Like I want her to live a life where she's not afraid to follow her passions and she's not afraid to be who she is, whoever that is, you know? So ladies, now let's look at advice. Let's learn about what advice you would give um, for entrepreneurs or for anyone who's into publishing or writing. So Rashmi, let's start with you. So what advice do you have? Oh, thank you, uh, Shante. My advice would be for um, authors, uh, specifically authors who would like to submit their uh, manuscripts to um, you know, publishers, be it independent publishers, be it to literary agencies, uh, to, um, you know, uh, small presses, um, make sure you read the submission guidelines of uh, the publishers or the literary agency. Uh, the reason for that is because most of the time, uh, you know, most and when I say most 99% of the time um, the publishers or the agencies they have uh, set uh, guidelines of how they will accept the manuscripts um, it's imperative that uh, you know the author submitting uh, their work read through those submission lines and follow those procedures um, because if they do not do that uh, you know their manuscript would not even get a chance to go to the right person um, I say this because since we've started, we've received quite a few uh, submissions and we have very clear submissions um, listed on our website, ravensandrosespublishing.com. Um, but we see a lot of submissions that come in that, uh, you know, the moment you look at it, you know that 
the person has not really read the submission guidelines. They have not followed, um, you know, what we are requesting for. They've not sent us what we want. Uh, so most of the time, it ends up becoming a direct rejection without even us knowing what the book is about, what the manuscript is about. Um, so as an author, you would want to avoid that. You want every opportunity to get your manuscript, to get your writing in front of the editor, in front of um, the uh, acquisitions editor or the the editor in chief who are probably the people who are actually going to read that and decide whether this gets published or not um so we do not want to you know miss out on that opportunity so this is something um a lot of authors uh, especially new authors uh probably don't pay a lot of attention to and my advice would be to actually look at that pay attention to it and follow those uh, guidelines very good very good so the takeaways from that are to read and pay attention and make sure they follow directions. And it's it's very basic, I'm assuming, but just follow directions. So, and you have all that on your website and it's Ravens, Ro- ravensandrosespublishing.com? That is correct. Everything is uh, listed on our website. It's ravensandrosespublishing.com and most publishers and agencies will uh, list it out. So pay attention and follow directions. Very good. Thank you, Rashmi. Mm-hmm. All right. Yes. Yes. Very good. Very good. So Lally, your turn. So Lally, share any advice that you would have for any upcoming or aspiring authors. Thank you so much. Um, Some advice I have for aspiring authors. Uh, I have released now five, it will be five books for uh, since 2019. And one of the key advice I would give is like writing is just the beginning of the journey. And if you plan on um, becoming an independent writer or self-published author, you're basically uh, the publishing industry all in one human form. So <laughs> sounds like a lot sure of work. <laughs> it is. So make yes. sure you, you know, you, understand your intentions early, uh, why you want to become a writer, understand the full undertaking of the of the self-publishing world or the indie world, release all expectations, because writing one book is not, I mean, maybe if you're lucky, you, you become a, <laughs> a New York bestselling author with one book, but it's just the beginning. And fully immerse yourself in your passion to write, because if there is a story inside of you that needs to be told, and if it even resonates with one person, then you have made a difference in their life with your craft. So don't be afraid, um, you know, write and make sure you understand the importance of the level of effort it takes for marketing and book promotions and social media. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Because that is the majority of my time that I dedicate when I'm not writing. Oh, and one other piece of advice I wanted to share. Um, there is There are a lot of scams out there um, that have been targeting independent writers or self-published uh, writers. If anyone asks you for money up front for any type of service, I strongly urge that you always check out their um, their website or their uh, organization name on writersbeware.com because they there have been many friends of mine that have been scammed out of thousands of, of dollars um, from you know uh, firms that pretended to be agents or agencies or publishing houses and they ask for money up front so just you know writersbeware.com is an important um, uh, piece of information to have just for your peace of mind wow lolly you are so on point that is actually the resource that was shared in the last episode and jd yeah. said he wished he had known about writers beware and about the writing community because He learned a lot just being a part of the community and also from Writers Beware. So thank you for sharing that. That is a very, very good resource. And I mean, this is coming from experience too, right? Because when you're first starting out, you know, we're trust, we're very trusting people. So we trust everyone (laughs) and Mm -hmm. we're excited, especially when they say, oh, we want to represent your book. We want to, you know, we want to publish it. So 
um, yeah, that's a good resource to have. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. My pleasure. Yeah. So Amarina, you are next. And what advice do you have? Now, I know that you're into marketing. Can you share some advice as it relates to marketing? Um, well, as Lolly uh, already pointed out, marketing is almost like a full time job in itself. Um, so definitely don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. But um, as she said, like, um, you have to kind of, um, you know, figure out your your brand and stick with it. Um, that's something that as a new as a new marketer, you might have trouble with because, you know, like no one really teaches you that. Like, how do you how do you sell yourself? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, you just kind of figure out as as a writer, especially, you know, you kind of figure out what it is you're trying to say or what it is your work says um, and, you know, come up with your brand and, you know, and then kind of put it out there. And um, something that I think a lot of new writers don't realize is that you really need to get on social media and a website and different things like that before you start trying to reach out to publishers. Um, because, yeah, um, I didn't know that. And uh, but then finally found that out and started last year. Of course, you have to be careful because... <laughs> Because if you're like me, that can slow you down a little bit because you get engaged in other projects. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm excited to be engaged in those other projects. Um, and also just, you know, you got to be careful because social media can just be addictive. We all know that. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. God. There's something on there every second. Something new yeah. posted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that balance is not going to be easy. So we'll have to keep reminding ourselves about it. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, and I've recently learned, um, Rashmi introduced me to this, that apparently book talk is really important for uh, writers. It has a very high uh, return on investment there. So if That's you're... Cool. What is it called? You said TikTok? Yeah, TikTok. Book talk so there's TikTok. a book talk. in TikTok called Book Talk, specific <laughs> to uh, indie authors, and there it's a very supportive community. Um, and mm -hmm. a lot of authors um, swear that they have, uh, you know, they get more return on investment from Book Talk uh, side of TikTok than any other social media combined. Yeah. Oh, I, I okay. still I still have to figure that one out, Rashmi. Thank goodness yeah. you're you're more of an expert than me because I'm I'm struggling on Book Talk, but. I'm doing my best. There's just so many platforms. Yeah. It's so yeah. difficult because I also, I'm, I have a large following on Instagram as well. So I'm trying to juggle both and mm -hmm. Instagram and Twitter. And so with book talk, it's been, it's been a challenge for me, but uh, I know that uh, it's, it's a good platform to be on for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's always the, you know, uh, with, with social media, it's always the next best thing, right? Um, mm -hmm. So you're, there are so many social media platforms that uh, you're trying to like jump from one to the other, but sometimes it's just about what works for you. You know, it, mm -hmm. like, yeah. it might be the next best thing, but if something's already working for you, then you want that, uh, you know, you want to put your focus on that. Uh, you can try other things, of course, but without taking your focus off of what is already working for you. Um, mm -hmm. And if the new thing is not working for you, then it's just not working for you, right? Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's good advice, Rashmi. Yeah, because there's there's a mm -hmm. ton of social media outlets out there. So yeah, pick pick what works. Maybe one or two, maybe three. But yeah, yeah. and yep, just work them. <laughs> and they all have different rules, so you have to spend some time getting to know what the rules of them are in the community. Like you can't just kind of guess and and you can't do the same things on different platforms right you have to mm -hmm. you have to learn what works yeah. best on the different platforms right and um and and i think book talk is more content development it's not the same as twitter uh if i'm you know if i understand it it's it's more of like the service that you're offering and if anyone is like i'm looking for a va if anyone has time please let me know <laughs> I am split into three and uh, it's it's become overwhelming for me. So uh, managing all the social media platforms. 
Wow. We are also, <laughs> we're also looking for a social media uh, manager. So. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> we, we 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 feel we see the need for uh you know the position social media manager because there's so many social media platforms and to keep up with all of it we said we need a dedicated dedicated person to do this for us you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. And I don't even have like I don't know hundreds of thousands of followers, but even just with a few, especially working a business yeah. like my real business and then doing CTA marketing, which is really my passion project, as I call it. Mm -hmm. And so I can only dedicate so much time to it. So I understand what that's like. So I try to be efficient with planning posts because thanks to things like the tool that TweetDeck has, you can schedule your posts. Mm -hmm. So I think taking advantage of stuff like that until you all find someone who can fill in that spot might be helpful too. That way you can spend a few hours planning your post and time them up and then kind of set them on automatic at least maybe a week in advance or a week or two in advance and that would maybe buy some time but just little tools and you know tips yes. you can do to to navigate yeah. that because it can be overwhelming when you're posting and you know and, and working and <laughs> just maintaining balance yeah. or yeah, harmony I should say but harmony yeah and balance. Those, those mm -hmm. are the key. But it's yeah, like, it's right. also it's all of the you know on Twitter especially is those algorithms so I mean, you can have posts, but if you don't have the interactions, nobody's really mm -hmm. seeing your posts. So you right. have to also understand a bit of that science, which mm -hmm. I don't pretend to. <laughs> <laughs> you know um, what I found to be most beneficial is engaging. Yes. Yeah. People think yeah. you can just post, but it's not an advertisement. It's, it's really how I see social media. It's a way to engage. And I think that's where the relationships come into play, just like what you all and what, what you're doing is I'm sure you engage with each, with each other. Before you even got to this point, you were mm -hmm. engaging, you know, really having a personal connection as opposed to just, hey, look at my latest, you know, post, look at what I'm eating or look at whatever people post, you know, things like that. But when you're engaging, you're having a conversation, you're asking questions, you're looping them in, you know, on a topic of discussion. I think that that's, that's to me more powerful than just doing a, 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 boast, a post and hoping that people will, will look at it and like it. That's just what I've seen. I, I, that's true. Right. Yeah. It's true. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. more of how much you interact with uh, others and draw attention back to your own accounts because you're interacting with them. They want to know what you are talking about. So they come to your uh, you know account and then there's a little bit of commenting and there's a little bit of chatting that goes on. And that's what actually helps you develop the algorithm. Uh, constant posting mm -hmm. and a lot of, uh, you know, probably RTing uh, for Twitter um, and just not talking about it is definitely not going to help. Yeah. Right. Um, right. And he, and humanizing is very important too. Like they need to see that you are a person, not just an idea or yeah. a book, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, Hey, I'm a real person behind this company or this book, you know, or exactly. real people. <laughs> Human. Yeah, that's, the, that's a good, yeah. Yeah. It's very, very good to that point. One mm -hmm. of the best things about interacting and connecting, especially as writers, is sharing our experiences and, you know, our lessons and maybe give some advice to people or, or even just in our writing journey. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I've learned so much uh, over the last two years just from the writing community on Twitter. So, yes. you know, that's a huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's very true. Very true. And I've seen a lot of that, too, um, where people are doing that. And yeah, I think it's good. I, I think people like to see progress when people are growing and they, they're a part of your journey. I exactly. think that that works really well, too. Plus, it just it helps people like to feel good. So if you're sharing an accomplishment and you're on your team, they're rooting for you. You know, they're feeling good, too. So I think it just kind of spreads. <laughs> yeah, it's a community. Absolutely. Ladies, it's been a pleasure having you all on the show. And now what I need for you to do is to share how people can find you, how they can find you online, how they can buy your books, all of that cool stuff. So Rashmi, can you go first and share your information with us? Sure. Thank you, Shanti. Um, so people can find us in uh, mainly on our website. That is ravensandrosespublishing.com. Uh, um Lali's book is also available on our website, but it is also available across all uh, uh, digital platforms and uh, 
uh, online retail stores. Um, we are available on social media uh, as Ravens and Roses Publishing um, on Instagram, Ravens and Roses Publishing on TikTok, Ravens and Roses One on Twitter, uh, <laughs> and Ravens and Roses Publishing on Pinterest as well. Um, we uh, I mentioned previously that we also manage a writing group. It's called Confessions of a Writerholic, and you can find us as Confessions of a Writerholic everywhere. Um, Twitter. Um, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, uh, everywhere we are Confessions of a Writerholic and Discord app, that's where the writing group is. Uh, it's Confessions of a Writerholic as well. Um, so that's mainly where it, uh, we will be. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Lally, your turn. Share with us where we can buy your books and find you online. Yes. Well, I have a lot of links, but you can find me on my website, authorlallyalove.com. All of my social media links, all of uh, the um, purchase links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, all around the world, you can find it there. And um, all my books are there as well. I just wanted to mention very quickly, Seven Days is a countdown to the launch of Blade of Truth. And we're running um, a huge uh, book promotion, a giveaway um, for anyone that purchases and pre-orders Blade of Truth now. It's only for $2.99. And they have a chance to win an Amazon gift card worth $50 and a signed book. So we have seven oh, nice. days. Yes. I mean, cool. $50, you know, can you imagine how many books you can buy? You can buy a ton of books with that. <laughs> yeah. Those exactly. ebooks at 99 cents a pop. <laughs> you could really do a lot. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. Awesome. All right. And Amarina, your turn. Share with us where we can find you online. Okay. Um, you can find me on my website at amarinacarlton.com and on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, um, yep, all of them. And I'm Amarina Carlton. Made it very simple <laughs> on all of them. <laughs> Easy to find. Perfect. You're definitely the marketing yeah. person, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the giveaway yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, ladies. So here's my last question for you. Some last words of wisdom. Who wants to go first? Last words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> That's always fun. It could be a favorite quote. It could be, you know, whatever. Just something something to leave with the audience. Okay. Um, I can go first. Okay. Um, so one of my favorite quotes, uh, uh, you know, that I have um, on up on my boat is... Uh, I, I don't know who said this, but it says um, the worst decision is indecision. Uh, and it just strikes a chord with me because a lot of the times when I want to do something, um, I'm always like doubtful, like, you know, will this work? Is this how I should do it? Or is there something else I should do? And I see that because of that fear or because I'm trying to actually get it done, um, you know, in a way that uh, everything works out. I just sometimes, you know, uh, miss the opportunity or I just don't do what I need to do. Um, but ever since I put up this quote on my board and I keep, I just look at it and I'm like, no, I have to make a decision. I'm just going to do it. And <laughs> yeah, it goes. <laughs> I like uh, that. Yeah, it's beautiful. It, it works. Mm -hmm. That it, Just looking at it on the board, it really works. So for me, that's one of my favorite quotes. The worst decision is indecision, you know, just decide and do it. I like it. That's powerful. That's very powerful. All right. So who's next? You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So who's next? I, I can go, I guess. Um, okay. I've, I, you know, I love poetry and uh, I'm a huge admirer of Maya Angelou's. Uh, there are so many quotes that I can um, end with, but one of my books, The Joy of It, Infinite Transcendence, I actually provide my own quote. So if I may read that to you. Oh, yeah. When we operate from the space of heart-centered consciousness, every soul becomes our mirror and our teacher. We are all connected within this web of radiant life force energy called love. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> that is beautiful. Okay, now, Lolly, yes. you know I do inspirational quotes on all of my shows. I would love if I could use that in my next episode. Oh my gosh, it's my pleasure. I, I will send it to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was beautiful. 
Thank you. What did you say? The more love we can share, the better the world. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I really do like that. Yeah, please send that. And I will definitely mention you on that episode. So Thank I'm you. gonna use that in my next quote. I love that. I do inspirational quotes for every single episode I do. It just sets the That's tone. Beautiful. Oh it yeah. It's very uplifting. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Amarina, it's your turn. So what do you have? <laughs> um, uh, one of my favorite quotes, um, kind of like Rashmi, I keep this one up. Um, I have rotating quotes on the back of my computer screen for when I'm staring, trying to write. And um, this is one of my favorites is doesn't matter how slow you go as long as you don't stop. Um. And it's credited to Confucius. I'm not 100% sure if he said it, but. No, I've heard that one before. And that's, okay. yeah, that's a good one too. That's, I think I may have used that one before, but that's a good one too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And especially with creatives and um, I, I struggle with anxiety a lot and, you know, you, you face a lot of imposter syndrome and you just like, it's like, okay, it's okay that this is taking me longer than I thought it would. I just have to keep going. <laughs> just That's keep, right. keep going <laughs> mm -hmm. and you will reach the stream as long as you keep going. <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. I think the inspirational quotes just help us throughout the day. And they just, even though they're, they're simple and they're short, but they hit the right spot if you have the right one or ones, you know, sometimes you have multiples that you, that you look at and you use throughout the day, but, or at least when you're starting your day or a project. Mm -hmm. um, but I do, I, I like those. I like those a lot. Me too. And if I, I mean, I use them actually in my writing and um, for each chapter, it sort of sets the tone when I align it to different uh, inspirational quotes. Um, and uh, I, I find it very helpful. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I do too. I, I love those. Like I said, I have them in every episode at the beginning of every, every episode I have them on there. So, all right, ladies, this has been a pleasure, like really, really a pleasure. I'm just so glad you all have been spending the day with me today. This has been great. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yes. This has been great. Thank you so much for yeah, having thank me. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And congratulations on everything. I mean, with the Ravens and Roses Publishing and the new book, Lowly, and then also Marina, you're editing your first novel. So keep it up, ladies. You guys are inspiring people. And to me, that's so important. So important. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Again, ladies, thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Call to Action podcast. I really, really enjoyed having you. It's just I just felt the love just all around, just all around me. I just really feel it. This has been a really, really good show. It's been amazing. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And to all of the listeners, thank you for tuning in. And remember to go and check out ctamarketing.biz where you can read blog posts and check out past episodes of the Call to Action podcast. And also support the show by purchasing merch or donating so that I can continue bringing you quality content and actionable tips and tricks to help you navigate this ever-changing world. You can also support the show by purchasing my audiobook, QR Codes for Beginners, where you can go from beginner to almost expert in less than one hour. I'll also like to mention two of my favorite podcasters. Um, one is York Campbell. We've actually been doing some work together. He is the creator of the Poetic Earthlings podcast. And if you are into science fiction, go and check out his podcast. They are amazing. I mean, sound effects, everything. They're really, really good. And then also Most Precious Commodity Podcast. And you can find them on Twitter. You can find Poetic Earthlings on Twitter as Poetic Earthling. And you can find the Most Precious Commodity Podcast at Most Sci-Fi. I've done some voice work for both of these guys and it's just been fun. They've really got me out of my comfort zone. So if you guys just go and check it out, that would be really, really nice. I'd appreciate that. And to all of the entrepreneurs, self-starters, authors, and small business owners, remember the code. The journey begins when you take the first step. Courage, optimism, determination, and enthusiasm are the tools that will help you along the way. Until next time. 
Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Call to Action Podcast. Make sure to visit me at ctamarketing.biz. There you can find articles for entrepreneurs and self-starters on tech and tips related to navigating this ever-changing world. Until next time.